I think it's about time that I did an updated Passport Traveler's Notebook bullet journal in-depth video, so grab a cup of tea for this one. Hey, my name is Lindsay, and today I want to show you how I plan in a passport-sized bullet journal. I have been bullet journaling off and on since 2017, and it is by far my favorite form of planning. But with any planning system, there's always something that doesn't quite work out for me. And the one thing with bullet journaling that drove me a little bit crazy is that I would go through two to four notebooks in a calendar year, and I got tired of guesstimating how long to set up habit trackers for, how long would a notebook last me, and then resetting up and over, over migrating, in my opinion, a lot of information. Typically not that big of a deal. In fact, I love setting up bullet journals, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. But using a traveler's notebook to bullet journal has been a really good answer to that particular issue for me. I started doing this last year, and I'm really excited to be doing it again for 2023. So in general, my bullet journal is split across two inserts. So it's a bit of a modular setup. My first insert I refer to as my annual book, and this houses long-term information such as my monthly calendars where I do my future logging and long-term notes, lists, collections, habit trackers. I'm gonna flip through all my spreads up here so you'll see the types of things that I am tracking for 2023, but this stays in my traveler's notebook for the entire year and I no longer have to worry about hey is this this habit tracker gonna last me all 365 days because I know it's going to because I have the second book for the other parts of my system. The second book I often refer to as my quarterly book and this is where I keep track of my weekly spreads, maybe like a monthly habit tracker, but the core of this book is really my daily logs. I'm a huge fan of a daily log. It allows me to focus on what I need to get done on a daily basis along with merging it with memory keeping so I can log, write down the most important things from the day, the things that made me smile, what I was into, I can sketch and get a little bit of a creative outlet out of my planner as well. And with any planner or bullet journal, because I kind of marry both the memory keeping and the planning, it ends up being this really unique log of my life. At the end of the year, I can see everything I set out to accomplish, what maybe I didn't accomplish, and things that I thought were worth writing down um, for an entire year quick uh, hardware rundown. This is the Traveler's Company Traveler's Train Edition cover. I got it last year from Traveler's Company USA. My charms are from Bomb Kuhen. I've got this one and then there's a little airplane down here. My inserts are from Good Ink Pressions, and I'll put all the specs down below, but if you've seen any of my bullet journal videos from last year, the main change is that I have moved to cream Tomoe River paper instead of white, and the motivator for that is the cream just shows a little bit less dirt, and I flip through my planner constantly, <laughs> so I just think that the pages are going to hold up a little bit better, look a little neater at the end of the year compared to last year. I've also downsized to a 3.7 millimeter grid, which was very nice. It gave me just a couple extra rows, so now I have 32 rows per page, and you'll see my habit trackers. It's a lot easier to draw them out versus having to print them and things like that. I'll have all the specs for my inserts in the description bar if you are looking for something similar, but Good Impression Shop is based out of Spain, so keep that in mind. It takes a couple weeks for them to get to you if you're based in the States like I am. Um, let me pull this apart because I do get asked about this quite a bit, how I kind of get all my inserts in here. Both of my books are wrapped around with a wallet. This one is the Olive for Roof collab. I got mine off Etsy, but I've seen them at USA Partner Shops, so maybe check there. And then my quarterly book is wrapped around with the clear card case uh, from Traveler's Company, which I just keep some Polaroids. And then I've got some just key information uh, behind the paper here that I don't have to rewrite from planner to planner. But what I do is I take a rubber band. I'm currently using the ones from Traveler's Company, but any rubber band will do. And I wrap that through the center of my insert wallet and then the center of my second insert wallet. And this gives me this kind of sandwich here. 
And what I'll do is under the main elastic of my traveler's notebook, I will slip that first wallet under and they sit in my planner like so. I definitely get overhang. I get asked about this a lot. It just kind of gets scooched to the back so it doesn't look as obvious um, as when I'm looking at it from the front, but at this point that doesn't even bother me anymore. Couple other hardware bits. I have this here. This is the Traveler's Company writing board for 2023. I got mine from Yoseka this year. I do put a Loistrom pen loop on it. And uh, these are pretty adhesive. I've been able to pull them up and kind of move it from writing board to writing board, but it will pull up some of the designs. So if you risk this, I recommend putting it on the grid side not the design side because I think it'll pull up that ink. Um, but this is how I keep my pen attached to my planner. I use a Pilot Vanishing Point, which is my go-to fountain pen. I'll have this in my ink in the description box below if you're curious what I use, but it's my ride or die pen at this point. But I just keep that tucked in the back and it's pretty secure to pull on and off without you know, uh, being too much of a fuss. I also use a Traveler's Company brass clip. I don't think you need this specific one by any means, but having a heavy clip is a game changer because one of the things about using a Traveler's Notebook is depending on your inserts and how bulky your wallet is, things don't lay completely flat. So this was something that I had to adapt to, but just weighing down the corner makes using this very easy. And on the go, in fact, I'll actually put this down the center of the spine and it's really easy to write on without a desk when I do that. Let's start with my annual book because uh, this is kind of my favorite part of a bullet journal is all of the habit trackers and things like that. And let me just zoom you in a touch. All right, I think this is the most zoomed in I've ever been <laughs> for a, a passport planner, but I write really small and this planner is incredibly tiny. So hopefully this is big enough for you to see. Sticky notes are from uh, Midori. I got them from Jet Pens. Uh, Ephemera was gifted to me by my friend Amanda. The sticker is from Petite Gloom over on Instagram. Uh, more sticky notes. These are both from Daiso. I like to use sticky notes in my system. Vision board was created in Canva. I find photos from Pinterest, Unsplash, and some of my own. I upload them into Canva and it's got some neat tools just to kind of create um, a vision board and then I print them off and then put them in my planner. In my annual book, I keep what I refer to as my master index. So I am an indexer. I think if you bullet journal, you're either an indexer or you're not. But all of my quarterly spread books along with this index get, this book gets indexed in the spread. So I just have one place to reference. These right here are called the Midori Index Clips, by the way. They are metal tabs, they're reusable. I get mine from Jet Pens, and I'm still using my set that I bought in 2021. I've got a mix of the silver and the orange in this particular setup. Next, I have my monthly calendars. One thing I love about this is moving to this grid size, I can now do six by five for each of my squares for my monthly calendars. My stickers I made myself, but this is where I log upcoming events. So birthdays, appointments, travel, and then at the end of each day, if I have something that I think is worth collecting on this page. So I've been sick here in January. So I went ahead and added that in just so I could see that. And then I do a running to-do list for my tasks down the side. I draw all my monthly calendars out and I do put future events directly on the calendar. If something gets canceled, I just strike through it. After my monthly calendars, we move into my habit trackers. And again, this is where the grid size is kind of coming in clutch. My two main things that I track throughout the year are my cycle and my workout log. I do the first letter of each month, one through 31 down the side, and then each day I log down my main workout. I'm just focusing on moving my body regularly because I have a very sedentary job. I'm doing a yoga challenge this month, so you see a lot of whys. I just do the first letter of each of my workouts, and then I'm highlighting this with a mild liner uh, if I close my rings on my Apple Watch because I'm, I'm not very good at that. So I'm just focusing on, on getting better about that this year. I did start this in December, which is why you see some of this kind of weird stuff, but the dated Traveler's Notebook insert start on the 19th. So I thought I could, I could move in on the 19th. I have my adulting log. This is an Alistair method of the things I clean on a monthly basis or tasks that aren't automated, such as paying like our vehicle registration once a year. And I just write down the date that I do that task or a dot if I don't need to do that. Then I have my wish list, gift list combo. Again, an Alistair method, things for me, things for my family members. 
I have a quick reading log for books and fan fiction that I read throughout the year. Call log is where I just briefly record what my best friend and I talk about throughout the year. Date log is for me to write down any date nights that my husband and I go on. It's just fun to see how many we go on in a year. Media quotes is a new collection for me, just writing down like quotes from books or movies that I think are funny or inspire me. And then I have a recommended page if my friends say, hey, check this out, because I'm terrible about following up on those. Patreon log is just a quick uh, stuff for me to keep on top of the perks that I offer along with the Lindsay Scribbles check register because I'm trying to open a shop this year. Debits is a spread for me to keep track of money movements between our different accounts. And then this is my low buy spread. I am doing a stationary low buy for 2023. I've already made some purchases. <laughs> And then I have my spending uh, slash package tracker here. I do date, description, money in or money out, my balance. And then I will do uh, the two dots if there's no shipment associated with it. But if there's a package, I'll do like an X when something ships and an X when I receive it just so I can stay on top of that. This is some Stardew Valley information that I printed off. These are on Reddit. If you search Stardew Valley Reddit last day to plant and then go to images, you'll find this. And same thing, Stardew Valley Reddit Community Center bundle, you'll find this. Stardew Valley log. I do a lot of video game logging because I play games sporadically. So I'll just write down the date, a brief description of what I was doing or what I'm trying to do if I need to like save things up for something or another. And then I'll leave myself some task reminders underneath if applicable. I don't log every time I play, but I will log if it's like, oh, I, I really need to remember to do this the next time I play. And I just reference this before I open the file. Uh, I'm doing some Animal Crossing planning. I started a new island. I'm going for like a dark academia theme. So I've just sketched out some different ideas and different items that I think I'm looking for. Uh, things to de-stash this year, things that I need to get at not our grocery store. And then I have started a health log this year. I was inspired, um, I think by Julie's plans. She talked about this, but I'm just trying to keep track of different health things in one spread. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, these stickers came with the dated monthly insert from Traveler's Company this year, the uh, passport size. So moving on to my quarterly book. Uh, again, more sticky notes from Midori, uh, a little collage with elements gifted to me by my friend Amanda. And I did some like ink splatters inspired by Plant Based Bride. I really liked her bullet journal setup for 2023. I do have an index for my quarterly book and I typically will migrate anything that I think I need to find again up into my master index when I go to when I go ahead and archive my quarterly book. Um, just a refresher, I use this insert until I run out of pages or the new quarter starts, whichever comes first. So I get a fresh start built in each quarter and it's fun to like have a new vibe. I personally get really attached to setting up my weeklies a very specific way or doing my dailies a very specific way and these quarterly refresh helps me like mentally give myself permission to say okay let's try something new this quarter uh, which i really like since i moved in in december i went ahead and set up my monthly for december and transferred information over these stickers are from my patreon designs and these are the new weekly layouts for 2023. I am high key obsessed with this. I was really fond of last year's weekly layout, but I'm really liking this particular one. I've got Monday through Saturday over here. With this insert, I get five rows per day of the week and Sunday gets tucked down here at the bottom, which I thought was gonna bother me, but I actually quite like it. Uh, habit tracker and then I use the space for whatever list that I need. I primarily use my weeklies as a landing page so at the beginning of a month I set up all my weeklies. I look at my monthly to-do list and I'll start kind of sprinkling things down across the week to distribute them and any appointments for my monthly get rewritten again on my weekly and this is where I do any future planning for maybe the next day because I do like doing my dailies real time. So if I think of something, oh, I need to do that next Tuesday, I'll flip to next Tuesday and write that task here as well. This sticker is also from Petite Gloom on Instagram, uh, along with this one here. This washi was gifted to me by my friend Amanda. 
And then following my weeklies, I move into my daily logs. One of the questions I get asked a lot is what goes on your daily versus the weekly? And the answer is anything on my weekly will get repeated onto a daily. 99% of my day is spent on this spread. So the night before I will reference, let me bump ahead here. I will reference my current weekly, look at what's on this list, look at my running list, and then I will go ahead and set up my daily for the next day. And I will duplicate anything that's on here down to here. That helps me just filter down to what I really need to focus on. And I don't mind writing things multiple times. It just keeps things fresh in my mind. Uh, but then throughout the day, I just keep track of my general tasks and things like that. And I'll doodle and memory keep kind of throughout the day where I have space. I've got some tippins in here as well. I've been doing a lot of watercoloring this year compared to using Tombow dual brush markers. I have a watercolor set. I can put it down in the description because I don't have it handy, but it was a Windsor and New Newton travel palette and I got it Black Friday on Amazon for like $20. And so far I've been really enjoying it. It's Tomer River paper, so it handles water. There, there's a fair amount of buckling um, as I've started to kind of learn the amount of water that I need to use. Um, when I am traveling, I do give myself a full page per day just so I've got more space to kind of memory keep the trip. And I really just focus on keeping this up to date and I fill out my other journals or whatever as I have time, but this is what I try and keep uh, in use and accurate. Uh, I was traveling through the end of the year here. Uh, moving into January, I gave myself a quick like habit tracker. This is the Yoga with Adrian um, monthly yoga challenge. I printed that with my pulley printer. Again, I made myself another quick vision board, found the photos on Pinterest, upload them into Canva, print that off. Um, I just choose whatever size and then glue that in. And then my weekly spreads. So this was last week. That's what it's looking like. These stickers are from Midori. This is my current week. And then as I mentioned, I set up all the weeks for the month. Uh, this washi came with a Yoseka order that I got for Christmas. And the last week that I set up for January. And then again, I follow that with my daily logs. Um, so yeah, I really love a daily log. Uh, I, I can't stress it enough. I think it's it's just a lot of fun. Um, this was from some Happy Mail. And here is my current weekly. I've been doing a lot of watercoloring. As I mentioned, these are the orange Midori tabs. They've uh, tarnished quite a bit already, uh, but they are three years old at this point, so I would expect them to be. So yeah, this is this is where I'm currently at. I have really enjoyed using my Passport Traveler's Notebook. I hope that covered the majority of the questions that people had. Uh, let me zoom you back out here. Yeah, so this is, this is my everyday carry. It's also my wallet. I think, I'm not sure I quite mentioned that. I do use this wallet insert to hold my main cards and cash and things like that. And it does go, you know, with me out and about everywhere, all that kind of stuff. I have a video on how I archived my 2022 bullet journal, so I can link that up in the cards. I'm going to be archiving this the same way for 2023, but I'm just really looking forward to having another year in this little size. If you've made it this long, thank you so much for being here and I'll talk to you soon.